So if I go back to my Power Pivot workbook again, back to Excel, and get out of my out of the expression here, and I get rid of that sum of sales amount, which doesn't work. If I drag down the many-to-many -many sales amount that I have over here that I've created, drop that in. Now you can see I'm getting numbers for their sales. So this looks great. Um, uh, that's the correct number for each person there. But what is the problem here? What are your end users going to say when they bring up this workbook and see this? They're going to see 2,000, and it's just about 2,500. That's 3,000, 3,000. Hmm. If you add these up, it, they don't add up to 2,900. And this, this is actually the correct amount, though. This, this amount here is the right amount, believe it or not. But you know what's going to happen? Your end user is going to open this up. They're going to highlight these columns right here. They're going to look down to the bottom. They're going to see the summation is three three five zero three thousand three hundred fifty dollars uh, There's something wrong with your workbook there, Mr. IT guy or Mr. BI guy. You need to go in and fix your workbook. Uh, when actually, no, this is actually the correct number right here. And if I drag over the uh, sales ID here and drop it in our columns, you can kind of tell that here. So if you look at this divided up by sales ID, you can see that Mike worked on this sale for $100 and $200. And so it is a correct number. And you get $300 worth of work that he did, sales that he's attributed to. And Brian worked on $200 and $250. So his sale is $450. But Mike and Brian share that $200 right here. They share the 200, so we don't want to count the 200 twice as a total because we didn't have $400 in sales. We had $200 in sales. It's just that Mike and Brian happen to work on the same sale. Across the bottom here, uh, these are the correct numbers here. You'll see that uh, the 200 is only counted one time for this ID, so we don't see 400 at the bottom there. So these numbers here would actually add up to the 2,900 like they're supposed to. But when we sum it up by uh, sales rep, uh, you're going to get numbers that are correct and these numbers are all right, including the, the calculation at the bottom here, is all right, but your end users may be confused by that. So that's a little bit of a training issue there. You may have to go through to uh, teach your end users that uh, many of these do work. Uh, it's just you have to trust these numbers here, and uh, maybe you have to put some uh, some good naming conventions on this, letting them know that this is many to many or something, so that they know that uh, the numbers aren't going to uh, sum up correctly on the screen, but they are the right numbers in the back. All right, so that is many to many. Let's go back to my slideshow here. All right, next thing we're going to talk about is inactive relationships. So when you're building a power pivot model, uh, you may use, a, say, a date table, and you may have a fact table that has more than one date on it. Uh, for example, uh, in AdventureWorks, you'll see there's an order date, a, a due date, and a ship date on uh, in AdventureWorks. And if I bring over my date dimension, uh, it's going to show those three relationships in the date diagram view, which I'll show you in just a moment here. But uh, only one of the relationships can be active at a time. And so how do you use that relationship? And oh yeah, um, I don't know if you guys saw um, Bill Gates uh, was a, uh, getting a new haircut, and the, the guy cutting his hair was a big Apple fan, and uh, uh, it was a big, big debacle. I don't think he's... Uh, keep that around very long. All right, so uh, let's move on. Let's talk about active relationships. So speaking of relationships, you're not going to get a relationship with that haircut. Oh, to do All right, All right. Uh, let's go back to our model here and let's talk about uh, inactive relationships and active relationships. I'm going to close this one up here. And I have another workbook here called DAX Demos. Let me open that one up. And let's go to Power Pivot. By the way, Power Pivot is a free install. You, uh, download it just to a search for Power Pivot. It's, uh, there's a 2012 version out now. It works great with Office 2010 and it's free. That's what I'm using here today. All right, so here we go. Here's a great example here. So I have my uh, date here. I have my date key, my, my full date, calendar month, calendar year. I have my, uh, my date information here on my date table, uh, which I'll show you how to create a date table too in a minute here. It's really easy to do. And But you'll see I have these multiple relationships here between uh, my date and my reseller. If I uh, double click on one of these, you'll see that one is by ship date here. So my, my ship date is related to my reseller table by ship date and date key. And the next one here, if I double click on that, you'll see this one is related by due date to the date key. So, so on and so forth. So there's multiple relationships here. But the only active relationship I have here is this one here. The one that's actually uh, darkened in, and that's the ship date one. 
That's my active relationship here. You can always tell your active relationships by the uh, dark line here, and you can double click on them to uh, see which one's active. The dotted line ones are inactive. So when I start slicing and dicing this by date, it's only going to use that active relationship. It's not going to use a, uh, any of the other ones there. But we can cheat and we can actually use other relationships if we want by using some DAX expressions. So if we go back here and go to our sales table here, you see I've got lots of calculations that I've created. I've even got some KPIs over here I've created. Uh, we have time, I might mention those. Uh, but I do have a calculation here that I've created. So here's my year to date. Zoom in here. So doing year to date is really, really easy inside of DAX. So there's my total YTD function. I put in what I want year to date on. I want the year to date of my sum of sales amount. Sum of sales amount is another calculation I've created already. And then you basically have to put in the date here. And that's it. So I put in my date. And that's it. It'll sum up year to date for me. So this is all built in. That's why DAX is so easy to use. It's, I've got functions like this total YTD. It'll work for you. There's also a QTD and MTD for month to date and, year and uh, uh, quarter to date. So a lot of good stuff there. All right. But right now, if I, if I do this, though, uh, I'm not telling it what date to use. All I did was just say use full date alternate key. I'm not telling it which relationship to use. So it's going to use the uh, ship date. That's the one it's going to use. I can't, uh, I can't change it with this one here. But if I go to my second calculation I've created here, I'm doing the same thing here, uh, total YTD here. But I'm throwing, instead of just throwing the sum in there, I'm using the calculate function again. Remember, calculate says do this, but use this filter. So my, after my comma here, the rest of this is just a filter. And you can see my filter is quite easy. It's just a use relationship here. So use relationship, what relationship do I want you to use? I want you to use the relationship between the date alternate key, the reseller sales date, and I want you to use that due date is what I want you to use. Due date, not, I don't want you to use that, uh, the ship date. So I can change this to whatever date I want here. So I'm using the due date from the reseller sales table. And then the last thing here is the uh, date again. And that's, that goes back to the total YTD back there at the beginning. So you just throw that in. That's part of the total YTD function. So the use relationship part is just this one right here. I'm just using that relationship. Full date alternate key where it relates to the due date. 